I think they're plumb crazy to do away with the Pony Express. Well, so do I, but they claim this newfangled telegraph will be a lot faster. Won't work. You mark my words. Who ever heard of sending messages over a piece of wire? <laughs> what are you going to do now, Jim? Punch cows again, I reckon. Seemed pretty tame after a Pony Express ride. Yeah. I guess I'll hunt buffalo. They say there's pretty good money in hides. What's Johnny Blair going to do? I don't know, but he won't starve. He's been saving his nickels. He's still here in ten seconds. He'll be here in... There he comes now. Here you are, Ed. Right on time, Blair, as usual. Wouldn't want to be late on the last run, Mr. Dodge. Sorry to see it end. So am I. Men, when that mail reaches Sacramento, means the end of the Pony Express. You've established a record in carrying the mail that will go down in history. In appreciation of your loyalty, the company is giving each of you a gift. Two Pony Express horses, toughest and fastest in the country. Hey, thanks, boss. Just go down to the corrals and pick out the ones you want. And the best of luck to you, boys. Thanks. Thank well, thanks, Mr. Dodge. Two thoroughbreds each. Well, that's a real gift. Yeah, let's go ahead and pick them up. What are you going to do with your horses? Sell them. Oh, no, you're not. I got a better idea. We're going to start a stage line. A stage line? Sure, there's plenty of money in it. But we haven't got any stagecoach. Oh, we'll get one. Suits me, partner. And we'll pick out four good stagecoach horses. We'll head for Buchanan City. We may be able to get a stage there. Well, there she is, Buchanan City. I hope that fellow Drake's got a stage coach he'll sell us. Well, with a stage line the size of his, he ought to have plenty of old ones he'd be glad to get rid of. We'll soon find out. Well, here we are. for Cal Drake. That's me. Come in. What can I do for you? We want to buy a stagecoach, Mr. Drake. We figured you might have an old one you'd sell us cheap. Stagecoach? What are you going to do with it? Start a stage line. Where are you going to run it? We hadn't figured that out yet. You mean you haven't got a franchise? Franchise? You have to have one of those to start a stage line? Well, you boys are certainly new at the game. Takes a lot of money. You've got to go through a lot of red tape to start a stage line. How much money are you figuring on putting into it? Oh, about a thousand dollars. Maybe I can help you boys out. See all those lines? Those are all my stage routes. I kind of bit off a little more than I could chew, and I've been neglecting the Crescent City line lately. I'll sell it to you cheap. Two ambitious fellows ought to make a good thing out of it. Oh, how much do you want for it? Three thousand dollars. A thousand dollars right now, and the balance in two payments. Sixty-nine days. You can pay it easy out of the profits, and you'll find a stagecoach in Crescent City that goes with it. Well, uh, how far is this Crescent City? Thirty-five miles north of here. Well, we'll think it over and let you know later. Fine. Here's an atlas that'll give you a little idea about the town. Well, here it is. 
Crescent City. Population 3,500. Climate healthful, water supply excellent, school and church. What do you say? Don't you think we'd better go up and look it over first? What for? All those towns are alike. All right. We'll take it, Mr. Drake. Fine, fine. You boys got a great thing in this. And I'm going to get a lot of pleasure out of watching you make it pay. City, home of the Adams and Blair stage lines. Mail, passengers, and freight carried from coast to coast. Let's start advertising right now. Get a crowd together and make them a speech. Noise. Well, well, maybe they're out on a picnic. Or just out. Wait, I hear someone.
Well, there isn't much to look at. Well, it'll still carry passengers. We can get them. You could get them all right if, if you could land that mail contract. Mail contract? Yes. Yeah. Being postmaster of this here city, I'm in on the mold. Look at that. Sounds so bad after all. I smell something funny. So do I. Look out, it's a skunk. That was a close one. It sure was. Where can I get a rag and some water? Did he get you? No, we got to clean that coach up. Our franchise calls for a round trip to Buchanan twice a week. We got to get started. I'll fix you right up. There's a record for you. We doubled our population in one day. <laughs> there ain't many cities can do that. Blair's coming into town with his stagecoach. Empty. Well, how did you think it would be? Be ready in case he tries to start anything. We'll take care of him. I'll have the boys give him a welcome. Don't forget, boys. Let's give him a great send-off. Sit up in front? Sure, you won't be so crowded. 
I got a passenger for you. I charge half fare for jackasses. Come on, bring your friends. Place, miss. Oh, I know all about it. My father owns the town. Dr. Forsythe? Oh, it's not like any town you've ever well, seen. I've written me lots about it. It's quaint hotels, it's patient, the mayor and the sheriff, and all the big men. He wrote you all that? Yes, and all about the lovely stores. Oh, there's plenty of stores. And the funny storekeepers. I can hardly wait to go shopping. Say, does your dad know you're coming? Oh, no. I want to surprise him. Oh. You're going to be disappointed if you expect... Oh, I'm not expecting to see New York or Paris. <laughs> well, what do you got there? Captured me a laundry. They was run out of mud springs for using perfume soap in the miners' shirts. <laughs> going on about? She had a pretty hard jolt. Well, that stagecoach would jolt anybody. Let's leave at once, Dad. You don't belong here. I can't do that. Everything I have is here. Anyone here know how to treat a sick horse? I'm a horse doctor. I'm president of the Board of Health, too. There'll be old settlers time I cure that horse. <laughs> Mr. 
Mister, your horse got the botch, some epizootic, and a touch of glanders. You ain't going to drive another mile. But I've got to move on. My daughter's got the fever. You're in luck, stranger. We got the best doctor in the West. Uh, hey, Dr. Forsythe. I'd like to speak to you about your father. Yes? He put everything he had into this town. When he lost it, he lost confidence in himself. Of course he did, in this awful place. He'll be all right when he's back east among friends. No, he'd feel worse to go back a failure. If you had the right spirit, you'd stay here and help him. I don't think I need your advice. The child needs a rest. You've been traveling a long way. Yes. We're looking for a place to settle. Bring her to my office. I'll see what I can do for her. Thanks, Doctor. You can't beat this town. We've got fresh eggs, a fine laundry, stage line, and a brand new pretty school teacher. Now remember, Larry. Only allow seven passengers in the coach at one time. Our motto is comfort without crowding. Oh, yes, sir. I'll ride on a piece with you. All right, boys. Get out here. Good luck, old man. Miss Barbara. Old Doc, you're looking younger every day. I've been feeling much happier ever since Barbara arrived. Let's be getting back, Dad. I promised to give the children a reading lesson. Uh, we saw a work crew on the road early this morning. They're putting up that new telegraph line. Telegraph line? I want to talk to those fellas. I'll see you later. Bye, John. John's a fine lad, isn't he? Too bossy to suit me. It takes bossy men to succeed out here. Hey! Don't drink that water! That water, it's poison. Somebody must have knocked this sign over. Poison? Yes, deadly. Then that's what ails my men. And I thought it was the heat. I'll get a doctor. to thank you for saving our lives. Dr. Forsythe deserves the credit for that. If I can ever do anything for you, just call on me. If you really mean that, how about running your wire through Crescent City? Would it help you if I did? It sure would, can you? If it doesn't cost too much time or money, why, let's look at my map. Going through Crescent City, I'd have to cut off Buchanan. Well, why not? Let's see. The distance would be the same. But I wouldn't be able to get many supplies in Crescent City. How many men do you need? At least 50. Well, if I get you the men and the supplies, does Crescent City get the telegraph? Yes. It's a deal. I'll see you later, Doc. Oh, long, John. Man, 
Ken, the telegraph company needs workers. The first 50 of you to reach Crescent City will get a job at $10 a day and keep. What's all the excitement about? They're running the telegraph to Crescent City. Blair and Adams are hiring men to work there. What? That's each pen and two bucks worth of gold a day. Now I'm heading for Crescent City. Yeah. Hold it, George. Well, that's our first step. The telegraph will bring some people. And when we get that mail contract, we'll put Crescent City on the map again. Right. Not for me, my boy. Come on, in. We're heading for Crescent City. Come on. Ten dollars a day. Think of that, boy. And they're hey, all wait a minute. Everyone is going over for us. Come on, get a gate on. You can, that Chuck, you let go. Who's that? You gonna let him get away with it? No. Go to Crescent City, Mr. Drake. Helpful climate. Population 3,500. No thanks. I'd like to see you in my office, Mr. Blair. Yeah, 
Boys, we're getting near the pass. Well, what about it? Well, hadn't you fellas better ride ahead and find out if it's clear? Yeah, sure. Well, it certainly looks like old times in Crescent City. And it's all due to John's efforts. How long will it last, Dad? Oh, probably a month or more. After that, John Blair will have to work another miracle. Well, why not? If he can win the race for the mail contract, we'll get a post office. And then Crescent City will be a beehive once again. If he wins. He'll win. You can bank on that. Every room in the hotel's full. Say, isn't this quite a come down from mayor and sheriff? Maybe, but the boys are kind of ashamed to tip the mayor. I'm doing all right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes the here comes the stage. Where's Larry? He ought to be driver. second payment on that Crescent City franchise. Don't reach for anything but your pen. Remember, you don't own that stage line yet. We'll talk about that after the government mail race. Shot him. He didn't see them. They fired from the bushes. How is he, Doc? Is he going to live? The bullet lodged near his spine. Only a very delicate operation could save his life. Well, you're a doctor. Why, I wouldn't dare. I haven't operated in years. I've lost confidence. I'd be afraid Listen, that I... Listen, Doc. Larry means more to me than anyone else in the world. Do something for him, will you? Please, Dad. We have confidence in you. Haven't we, John? All the confidence in the world.
Larry will live. Oh, thanks, Doc. Tomorrow, Drake? Sure thing. This race means too much to me. If you win, nothing's going to keep me from it. Hi, John. Hello, Rocky. As treasurer of Crescent City, I'm betting the city funds on you, John. The whole $10.60. <laughs> Where's your coach? It's down at the livery stable. I'm going down there now. Come on. Good. Coach is hardly scorched. Do you suppose Drake or his men pulled this cheap trick? I'm sure of it. Well, whoever it was, you got one of them anyhow. You're under arrest. What for? For shooting a man. Well, it was in self-defense. He tried to burn Blair's coach. That can be explained to the judge. This warrant calls for your arrest. Who swore out the warrant? Cal Drake. Can't you see this is a trick to try and keep me out of that mail race? I'm sorry, but I've got to do my duty. Take care of those horses, Green, and stand guard over this coach. I'll get you out of this, John. Five minutes to go, and Blair is safe in jail. <laughs> this isn't a race. It's an excursion. Well, what'd you do, Doc? Get those horses over to the starting line. They've got to be there by 9 o'clock. Good as done, Doc. It's time to start this race. There's a minute left. Cut across to the relay station and tell them to have those fresh horses ready, just in case. I know it ain't right, Blair, but I... Here's an order for John's release on bail, signed by the Justice of the Peace. Hmm, $500 bail, eh? Business must be good in Crescent City.
didn't think he was going to make it. Hell, don't want to stay in a race long. And Blair got loose somehow, and it's up to you to stop him. Good luck, John. Thanks, Barbara. All right. I'll be right inside. If you need any help, you wake me up. What's the 
matter? Get after it!
out, Rocky. We've won. And we must never forget, my friends, how much we owe to John Blair. That's right. Yeah. I don't know how I can ever repay you, John. I do. Hey, look! 